There I have question number 22 and it requires a skillful calculation drawn from electrostatic. You could say there is a sphere of radius r and it has total charge 2q but the distribution is not uniform. It's a variable distribution with this given thing and mind you this k is not the general electrostatic constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. It is not. Unless specified, we cannot take any k as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, right? And after that, there are two charges, the next episode of the story, and those charges are minus q each, are placed diametrically opposite at a distance a from the center. And if a and b, the charges minus q, experience no force, we need to relate that distance A where the charge minus Q is placed with the radius. It's a nice one. Now, let's try to see. For that, I will take the help of a figure. Let me make a sphere, just a schematic one. That much would be more than sufficient for me. So yes, there is a sphere. And the total charge in the sphere is 2Q. Now, let's try to find out the value of k because that, you see, if I talk about the solution, the density has been given as k times r. And the value of k is not given. So let me first generate the first equation that will allow me to relate k. And that is quite simple. 2q would be equals to integral kr 4 pi r square dr, 0 to capital R, a simple calculation. The integration of volume charge density multiplied by the elementary volume from 0 to capital R has to give the total charge which has been given as 2 capital Q. And apart from that, there are two charges, see, this is minus Q, this is minus Q, at a distance a from the center that has been given and either of these charges is experiencing zero force. That means if you take this as the test one, it will experience force due to this as well as due to sphere. So the force on 1 minus Q due to this and due to the sphere should be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So for that, what we'll do is that first let's try to calculate the force exerted by the sphere. In order to do that, I need to calculate electric field at this point. And this is not a uniform one. So to calculate the electric field, I'll be employing Gauss law. Right, so the f Gauss law has to be called upon here, and that is C, electric field at this given point into 4 pi A square would be 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed, which is kr 4 pi r square dr 0 to e. Now with this, you see right here, let me call this as equation number 1. Let me call this as equation number 2. Now, just by computing the integral and dividing so that k would get cancelled out, one can easily calculate the electric field at this given point. Now my job is done. The final strike that I need to put is something like this. The required condition, let's try to see, is something like this. Q multiplied by E is the force on this test charge due to the sphere, Q into E. Has to be equals to Q square by 4 pi epsilon naught into 2a whole square. The force on this due to this. Okay. Once you do this thing, the value of E, you need to put it here. Eventually, you would see the relationship between capital R and E will land up to option number 4, which is the correct option. A bit of calculation is required. And that was quite interesting though. Let's proceed to the next. All right, the next one, there is a triangle 
and along the vertices of the triangle, the masses are kept. It's an equilateral triangle of side one meter. And we need to compute the x and y coordinate of the center of mass. Now, this one would be something like this. Not very specifically a difficult one. The coordinate of m1, you may write it as 0, 0. So let's call it as x1, y1. Coordinate of m2, that will be 1, 0. x2, y2. Coordinate of m3 would be x3, y3. And x3 would be 0 0.5. And y3, y3 is this height. And the side of this triangle is 1 meter. So that's going to be 1 by root 3. So here I go x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. So what would be xcm? m1, x1 plus m2, x2 plus m3, x3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. Likewise, you can calculate ycm as well. And the eventually, you will be getting option number 4 as the correct one. Let's now move to the next. Okay, 24, another from modern physics, but this time nucleus and more specifically radioactivity. Half-lives of two radioactive nuclei, A and B, the first one is 10 minutes, the second one is 20 minutes. If initially a sample has equal number of nuclei, then after 60 minutes, I think that can be easily related, six half-life, three half-life. The ratio of decayed, now this is a bit tricky, the decayed one, we need to calculate. Let's see. See, after six half-life, the number of nuclei remaining would be and not divided by two raised to the power six, and that's going to be 64. So and not by 64 would be the number of nuclei remaining for sample A after six half-life. But we need the decayed one, so be very careful with this part. Similarly, for the second one, you see three half-life, so the decayed one is going to be this much. So there you need to be careful. Do not jump into early conclusion as n not by 64, n not by 8. And there is a question which is trickily kept. If someone does not do this, the option 1 is to 8 would be there. So that may trap you. And option number one is the correct one. So this question specifically demands presence of mind. Indeed, any examination, you need to have that presence of mind. Okay, let's go to the next. 